Hello and welcome to Gearheads. My name's Jesse and today we're going to be working on my Miata a little bit and I'm going to be covering a problem that I've had on mine for a while and I've seen this on other Miatas as well. I think it's kind of common uh, and I've seen other reports of it online. So when I start the car in the morning, uh, I'm, and this is about oil pressure, so I start the car in the morning, oil pressure shoots right up to the middle or so at you know whatever the gauge is between 30 and 60 who knows what the the factory gauge is really telling you which is part of this problem probably but uh it starts up in the morning engine's cold oil pressures are good they're high and then as it warms up and you're driving the oil pressures do come down a little bit and that's normal the oil is going to warm up as you're driving and uh as it warms up it thins out and the pressures will go down a little bit and that's okay what is not okay is the fact that now, once my motor's warmed up, if I'm driving a long distance and it gets, you know, I don't know exactly what temperature uh, this happens, but I get up to a stoplight and then my engine's idling and the, uh, and the oil pressure just drops all the way down to, to zero. <laughs> so I don't, I, I don't think that's what it's actually doing. I think there's still oil pressure because if there wasn't, I'm pretty sure my motor would have taken a crap by now and I don't hear any bad noises. So. I'm hopeful that it's just lying to me. Maybe the sender is uh, bad. Maybe the connection on the sender is bad. Uh, you know, maybe because of the heat, the resistance is going up either on the wire or where the where the wire connects to the sender, or something's wrong with the sender internally. I don't know, because basically what happens is as the resistance uh, goes up, it the low oil pressure, you know, reading on your gauge goes down. So I just drove the car all the way down here to work and it's about a 30 to 40 minute drive and, it, and the oil is hot now so by the time I got here it was doing that and it's reading real low and so the car's sitting here in the shop. I'll show you how to get to the uh, get to the oil pressure sender. I mean it's no matter what way you do it it's not going to be that easy to reach sadly. It's down next to your oil filter and there's not a lot of room to get tools in there. Um, so. You know, we'll see what I can do and show you. And then I've got my gauge set here. So this is a uh, Matco automatic transmission and engine oil pressure testing kit. It's a very nice kit. I really like it. It comes with tons of adapters and it's got two separate gauges uh, depending on what you're going to be using it for. And yeah, so you know, you don't have to use this one. Obviously use whatever works for you, but try and get at least a gauge that's a decent quality so you can trust what it's telling you because uh, something like engine oil is pretty, pretty critical, obviously, and you want to be able to trust the stuff that you're using to read that. So anyways, if you guys are curious to see an actual review on this, uh, let me know down in the comments. Maybe I could do a tool review on it. Uh, otherwise, you'll probably get to see at least a bit how it works in this video. So let's get to it. All right, so here's my gauges. Uh, you might notice they're not the factory gauges. These are from a uh, rev limiter. I think we actually do have a really old video on how to install these things. And uh, rev limiter has a lot of a lot of really nice gauge set options. So I don't know. That's an it's an old video though. So watch out if you go see that one. But either way, let's go ahead and start this thing up. And uh, if you hear noises, don't worry. It's not actually the engine, it's just the whole car rattles like crazy because of these uh, really stiff engine mounts. So I think they have softened up a little bit with time, but I'm gonna have to do a whole bunch of whole bunch of stuff fighting rattles on this thing in the future. Either way, let's start it up and see what it shows us. There you go. So you can see it, you know, it, it did jump off of its dead spot, but it's reading like nothing now. So if I if I rev it up a little bit, it'll go. But it's kind of jumpy. It's like the gauge, the oil pressure gauge moves a lot more and it should be pretty linear. It should go up linearly with, with the uh, engine speed. See, see how it just kind of wagged around like that? I'm pretty sure there's something going on with the sender on this thing because it shouldn't be, I mean, look at, look at how it's jumping around. Either way, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll pull the, the stock one off and we'll put on my, uh, my mechanical gauge, see exactly what it's telling us. I'll compare that with what the factory manual says, uh, you know, what the specs should be at certain RPMs and stuff and at certain temperatures. So that should give us a good idea of whether I actually do have a healthy, uh, you know, healthy oiling system on this thing before I put a turbo in it. And I know the compression's good because we've tested that already before and I did a leak down test too. So anyways, let's go see. Okay, so coming down to the passenger side of the motor, under your intake manifold, your oil filter should be right down there. You can see the sticker on it. 
And then see that little brown wire going up? That goes to your oil pressure gauge. All right, and that is it right back there. So I'll go ahead and reach down and unplug it. Now, um, one thing to consider is it, it could just be a problem with the connection on the, the wire going to the gauge itself. Maybe that just needs to be cleaned up. And uh, you know, while it's apart, I probably will clean it up. But I will reach down there and get it and I will show you guys and tell you how I did it. But obviously there's not really enough room to stick a camera down inside of there and my hands. Now, uh, you could reach up from the bottom as well if you wanna lift the car up, but uh, I don't, you know, in my experience, that's not necessarily any easier than trying to get to it from the top. I would probably have a good amount more room in here if I didn't do my coolant reroute because I've got that big radiator hose going along this area as well. There we go. I got it at least started a little bit loose and then uh, there's not much room so if you need to you can take the starter out to make this easier but once you break it loose it should, uh, should come out pretty easy. There we go. So here's the factory sender right here. Now that's the uh, electrical connector at the tip I was talking about. You just got to pull that wire off. Uh, I'll clean it up while it's out of here. Now this is a 30 millimeter fitting here and you could put a socket on it and twist. The problem is if you twist this thing on the base, you know, you could break it and then your sensor's not going to be any good anymore. And I personally just didn't want to take the risk of doing that. Um, you know, it, it makes me a little nervous. If it's not too tight, you know, you could try it and see if you'll, if, if you break it loose, but if you're having to put a lot of pressure on it and it doesn't want to move, don't bother. Um, you're gonna need to maybe even pull your starter out. I didn't, but uh, I have this 11 16th Pittsburgh wrench that is uh, chopped short and the other half of it's been used on other projects too. Um, and uh, this is the same size as 17 millimeter pretty much, so. I got that in there and th this thing sits on the side of the block and I had to use one hand, reach down kind of underneath the left of it over near the starter area and, and just slip it on there and I could only move it like whoop, not even that much. I could move it like that much and then I had to take it out, twist the wrench over, you know, get it back on working blind and pull it again. And after a, a couple little turns like that, it was loose enough that I could just take it out with my fingers. So my kit over here, and if you get a kit similar to this, it should have a little uh, a legend up here telling you exactly what size fittings you have available to you. And uh, at least on the Miata, this is not an NPT fitting. It is not a standard, you know, metric or SAE thread. This is a British pipe thread fitting, and it is eight inch by 28 British pipe thread. So. Keep that in mind. Uh, be careful when you're going through your adapters. Make sure you get the right one out and make sure you match it up. You know, check the size, put the threads up with each other, make sure it matches, and uh, you should be safe. I just screwed it onto my, onto my uh, line here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the side of the motor, and then we'll pop this on and see what the actual oil pressure is. All right, let's go ahead and start the car up and see what the gauge actually reads. So I'm gonna start up real quick and make sure there's no leaks or anything down here, and then I'm gonna actually just take the gauge over to the windshield where I can sit inside and I can actually compare with the engine speed and see what it's telling me. No leaks down there, and I can already tell you right here, idling, it's giving me, you know, 37, 38 pounds of uh, pressure. That's that's plenty. That's totally fine at idle, uh, considering literally just 15 minutes ago, it was giving me zero on the inside gauge. But, yeah, let's go see what it actually shows when you rev it. So, still giving me that, you know, 30, 35 to 38-ish, and uh, I'm sitting right at a 1,000 RPM. Let's go ahead and rev it up a bit. I'll put it at about 2,500 RPM and let's see what it reads there.
sounds healthy to me. All right, so the factory pressures this thing wants to see at idle are about 1,000 RPM is 15 to 27 PSI. At 3,000 RPM, 47 to 57, or 45 to 57 PSI. And those are the accept acceptable ranges according to the, the factory manual at least that I have access to. So my car actually went above on both of those. Uh, at 1,000 RPM, I was at like 35 to 38. So that was a bit higher uh, and the same thing I was only at 2500 and I was at 55 to 60 I you know and it probably would have been even higher at 3000 rpm so I don't know if uh, the person that had this before me maybe they shimmed the oil pump maybe they upgraded the oil pump I really have no idea the guy used it a few times for drifting I think and then he decided he was going to do an SR20 build so he sold this motor to me so before this video is over I wanted to make sure we at least narrow down the problem here and I'm pretty sure it's the sender so I want to go ahead and test it I have driven it home and back since and it's been sitting here all day while I was at work. So right now it's cold. It should give us the, the readings we're looking for. And what I want to do is start it and check it. And then I'll tell you guys what the resistance is measuring at the actual sender itself. And then as it warms up, let's see if that changes. And if it ends up dropping and it's actually at the sender itself, we know something's going on inside the sender and we at least know it's not the oil pressure. It's not anything in the wiring of the rest of the car. So hopefully we can narrow it down. Now, the resistance measurements you're looking for, and this is specifically for the 90 to 94 mechanical actual sensors, not the newer ones that are just dummy switches. Those are different. It says 52 ohms at zero PSI, 42 ohms at 30 PSI, and 16 ohms at 90 PSI. And if you look at that, it should be kind of on a gradient scale uh, if your number falls somewhere in between there. But those are the acceptable levels. So let's go ahead and uh, hook up to it. So what you're gonna do is just go ahead and pull the wire off the sender, and then you're gonna need a multimeter. And I'm just gonna hook up my positive wire on the back side of the sender, put the black one. Um, I've got alligator clips on this already, good to go. And I'm gonna put that onto a chassis ground and see what the measurement is, at least before we start the engine, make sure that's within range, and then we'll start it. So interestingly enough, I have the positive side down on the sender right now, and I actually have the negative side grounded over on the back of the engine. Now, uh, the best way to test would be to a chassis ground, but I was gonna test that first because I tried a chassis ground, and I'm getting a reading here of zero. There is no measurement of resistance, and I changed the, the range on this to make sure it wasn't just super high or something, and it's still coming up with zero. So. I am starting to suspect there is maybe a problem with the sender itself and um, you know maybe when I start the car and it sees a little bit of pressure it will make a small connection and give us a value but as it stands right now even though the engine's not running it should be giving us a value of about 52 ohms. So let's start the car and see what happens. Okay, I hear the beep. Interesting. So it's jumping all around right now. No wonder the gauge inside doesn't look so good. That's giving us a, a reading of what, six, five, five ohms? So right now it's saying, it's jumping around like three, two, one, then nothing and then back up to five again. No wonder my gauge is whacking out inside and that's, you know, it should be reading right now because I'm guesstimating with the engine cold, I don't have the mechanical tester on there, but I'm guessing with the engine cold, it's probably around 60 to 70 PSI right now at idle. And uh, this thing's reading as if it was over 100, uh, or just dropping off, obviously. So let's see what happens when it warms up. It is interesting that it's jumping around though. It probably will continue to jump around, but the numbers will go up and it won't drop to zero anymore. And a good test to see how good my grounds are to the motor would be, uh, let me disconnect the ground from the, the back of the head and put it to a chassis ground and see if that drastically changes the number we see here. Hmm. And that did change things as well. So uh, maybe I have some ground issues too. Okay, so we learned two things so far. First off, I have a chassis ground issue. I need to do probably do a better job and double check all the grounds on my motor. I know the, you know, we obviously touched them all when we did the engine swap on this thing, but it would probably be helpful to make sure that the engine is properly grounded to the chassis right now. I'll have to check those later because the, the, this reading should pretty much be the same whether I'm grounding it to the engine or whether I'm grounding it to the body, and it is not. So there's a problem there. 
Also, um, we found out there's definitely an issue with the sender itself. And look, you can see the numbers already starting to come up as it warms up slowly, but now it's seeing 10. It wasn't even getting close to that before at idle. So the motor's warmed up now and uh, it is giving us some higher values now. It's giving about 16 to 18, uh, fluctuates a little bit at idle. And then the number does drop down as you increase the engine speed, which it's supposed to do. The number is supposed to go down as the oil pressure increases. However, we're still way out of range because right now it should be reading about 90 PSI and there's no way it's actually at 90 PSI right now. It's probably closer to 35 or 40 which is what it was at when it was at about this temperature and this engine speed when I tested it with the mechanical gauge. So I'm glad we did this video because I ended up learning a few things. Uh, first off, at least, I'm happy to know that my oil pressure is good. Uh, it's not a concern anymore. I know with the mechanical gauge when I had that on there, everything was within or above spec. Uh, so I have good oil pressure and that system's healthy and I don't have to worry about it. Now, I was also curious, obviously, about the sensor and whether it was that or something else causing a problem. And I have multiple things going on. So the sensor is bad. It's under-reporting. Uh, I guess you could say it's over-reporting because it's going to tell the car it has higher oil pressure than it should really because it's always reading low, but I'm seeing it in the car as lower than it usually is, and that is because I guess I must have put the needle on wrong, and the reason I put the needle in the wrong spot when I swapped those gauge faces is because that was the same oil sender even though it was on a different motor. At that time there was a 1.6 in the car, but I stole that sensor and put it on this engine, and uh, I when I put, the, put it on there I had started the car up made sure it was at a good warmed up temperature and I knew at least from before it seemed like it was gonna be you know it should be right in the middle and or around maybe a little above 30 or something like that and I put it on there I don't even remember it was so long ago I did it but either way the needle is not installed in the perfect spot so that needs to be moved I also know already my my gas gauge I guess when I did that I also put the gas the needle on for the gas gauge a little off so at some point my cluster will be coming back out so I can fix the needle positions and get them set up just right um, so anyway multiple things going on leading to me seeing what I thought was no oil pressure or at least you know reported no oil pressure and it's not true thank goodness so I hope you guys found this video helpful and learned some stuff uh, I know I did and uh, if you enjoyed it please leave a like if you want to see more stuff like this then hit the subscribe button and uh, leave a comment down below too. tell me what you guys think if you have any other information to add uh, I also might be doing a video on taking apart that oil pressure sender and trying to fix it because a new quality one I think retails for like 200 bucks or something like that which is a lot of money for a stupid small sensor like that and uh, I've seen people online fix them before, so I might attempt to do that, and if I do, uh, maybe I'll make a video on that. So tell me down below if that's something you guys would want to see, and uh, what else? I don't know, not too much. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a question, and uh, I always try and get back to you if I can. Uh, other than that, thank you for watching. I'm glad we got one more thing done on this car. It's nice to know that my oil system's good and that my cooling system's good, because we did another video on that, making sure that the cooling system was healthy, because I knew I had to top it off a couple times and I wasn't sure where the water was going. Found out it was a couple loose hoses and one of them the hose is starting to swell a bit so I will be replacing that soon. Haven't done it yet but it's still holding and it hasn't leaked yet so in any case I hope you guys had a good one and as always keep wrenching.